and all have been researching it ever since then, but really since 1985. I read Lauren Cohen's A Mysterious America. I thought, wow, this is something that I want to do. I want to travel around and talk to people who have experiences like me. So that's basically what I did. And all this time, I've been looking, searching for someone who had a similar encounter with two different inhumanoids in the same area at the same time. It took me 20 years, but a couple of weeks ago, I finally found a man who, who had that experience. I was watching a small town monsters documentary called American Werewolves, and there at the very end, they interviewed a friend of, friend of mine, now friend of mine, named Martin Groves. Now, Martin Groves' story is fantastic, and it's very important. I uh, want all of you guys to hear this story because it's, it's very important to hear this and at least think about the true nature of these inhumanoid creatures. So, Martin, where you at, buddy? Why don't you come here and tell these fine folks exactly what happened to you in the OBL? Hey, Thank you. Hello, Paris, Tennessee. Hello. And it's so good to see you and, and talk with everyone here today. Uh, my children actually graduated from Henry County high school here. I'm not from here. My kids ended up over here at one point. Um, I'm from a few counties over. I was a deputy sheriff for over 30 years. Uh, I don't mind telling you where I was from, from Robertson County Sheriff's Office. I uh, spent a lot of time in different aspects of police work, and I served a variety of different tasks. Um, during that time, along about 1993, a partner of mine that I had worked with at the sheriff's office, another deputy sheriff that we worked the same shift together, we decided to go on to a uh, hunting uh, trip in the land between the lakes. Now folks, you have to understand that I grew up coming to land between the lakes. Since I was a small child, we would go hunting and fishing here. Uh, land between the lakes meant one thing to me, it was to, and to my family, it was a refrigerator. Now, I'm just an old country boy. We come over here, this is, we get our crappy. People call it crappie, but old folks say crappy. <laughs> so, we come over and get our crappies, and we get deer, and we get turkey. Had no reason to fear. I've been here all my life sleeping in the woods, hunted, fish, trapped. 1993, something happened that changed my life forevermore. And it taught me something different. So my hunting partner came over in spring season in the month of May, and we picked us out a really nice campsite. We come in off the trace, and we ended up uh, just on the other side of the old buffalo Plains where they kept and stored and they call it a hidden buffalo pasture as well. Uh, some folks might know it as the uh, the Russian Creek, I believe, that, that comes through that immediate area. So we got as deep into the woods as we possibly could. The first night we were there it was on a Friday night. We came in, set up camp, had a beautiful campsite. Our backdrop behind us, we had about a cliff 50 to 70 feet tall behind us. We were surrounded by woods. Best campsite you could ever imagine. First night, the only thing we had, we had a raccoon come in on us and visit us and wanted some of our jerky and some of our, our food we had left over. Had a good night. We woke up the next morning and we decided to go our separate ways. The gentleman I was with was a mountain of a man. He was just an avid, avid outdoorsman, a hunter. With him, I didn't have any reason to even fear a bear to come into our camp. We went our separate ways, and I trawled throughout the day, just tramped around land between the lakes, searching for signs and hunting for turkey. 
throughout the day I got further and further away from my camp and I had went just about as far as I needed to go. I run across an individual when I come out onto an old side road and I won't talk too much about this part of it because it was I may have been possibly the last person to speak with this hunter, the last, last person to see this man alive. I spoke to the individual, we exchanged some pleasantries, exchanged some nice little hunting spots, we said our goodbyes and I went back into the woods. It was getting closer to dark in the late afternoon and if you've ever been in the land between the lakes, it gets dark. When it gets dark, no headlamps, there's no uh, man-made light whatsoever unless you're close enough to see the trace, and we were not. As I made my way back to camp, got deeper into the woods, I knew I was headed in the right direction. And as I was headed back to camp, I began to experience some very odd occurrences in the woods. Folks, when I began to tell you my story, understand I was a man of the woods. One of the first thing that happened to me is I heard a very loud metallic sound that did not belong inside the woods. It was as if a ship door or a metal building was being closed if anybody owns a pole barn. There's no pole barn where I was at in the woods. A little closer. Can we hear now? There we go. I find my husband's voice. I speak I speak real weak when I'm speaking to her, by the way. <laughs> yes ma'am, no ma'am, and all that kind of stuff. So as I got deep into the woods, this large, very loud metallic sound took place. Folks, there's no reason for the sound I heard. But I continued on and just wrote it off. I had no reason to feel anything at this point. As I began to walk and go deeper back towards the camp and make my little semicircle, I began to hear some very high, shrill whistles in the woods. This was loud whistles that I felt like was possibly another hunter in the woods with me. And I began to wonder if I had stumbled across another hunter. Turkey hunters can be uh, kind of territorial. So I kept continuing to walk, and that is when I began to hear noises behind me. About two to 250 yards behind me, I began to see something running through the woods and it was parallel to the side of me. And I caught a glimpse of some type of large canine creatures. And I thought to myself, well, this is great. I've got a pack of coyotes coming in on me, very hungry. So I kept close with my gun in my hand, my shotgun, and continued to walk. Lo and behold, I heard a wood knock. There was a knock in the woods that I felt at the time was my hunting companion. Am I getting closer to my campsite? What is this noise in the wood? It has to be another person. It has to be another human. I continued on walking. As I began to get closer to my camp, I caught movement in front of me. Next to a very large tree, I looked up and I thought I saw another hunter, but it was a large hunter and it would have had to have been a mountain of a hunter. I believed what I was looking at was a man in a ghillie suit. It wasn't a ghillie suit, I would find out. As I got closer, wood knocks, whistles in the woods, I've got whistles behind me, I've got whistles in front of me, and I've got some type of a dog-like creatures 
coming up to my side on all fours. I'm starting to kind of wonder if I'm going to be eaten by a coyote. Do I have a hunter in the woods in front of me and these are his dogs? I had no idea. Whistles, knocks, metal. I turned to my side to look to find how close these animals were getting to me. I heard a large metal sound for the second time. As I'm looking in front of me, the man in the ghillie suit that was just there a second ago is now gone. Gone. There's no way he could have disappeared. He was too big for the trees. He couldn't step behind a tree. So I done a little bit of a back step and started watching. I continued on. Still just putting it in the back of my mind. Marty, it's okay. There's nothing wrong. I've just got to get back to camp. As I get close to my camp, I begin to hear the knocks again. Now, folks, I don't have to tell you, by this point, any man is going to be thinking, what is going on? <laughs> Put it off in my head that it's probably my hunting partner, and he's very upset with me because I've been gone so long, and it is getting very dark. So I begin to get close to camp. I see me some campfire, smell some smoke. And as I walk in, I holler from my campmate, and he hollered back. When I got close enough to see his face, he was as white as a ghost. And I looked at him, I said, hey man, I'm sorry. I know that I've been out too long, I didn't mean to worry you. He said, Marty, it's not that. He said, when I went hunting today, I've been followed, I've been harassed by a hunter or somebody. I've had stuff thrown at me. Every time I would go to sit down and try to set up a blind to turkey hunt, I would have something, wood or rock, something thrown at me. And I got somebody whistling in the woods at me. And we had not seen each other for a period of eight to 10 hours. We settled down into our camp and we spoke about our day. It's dark, we're hungry. We're one to eat. The first contact we had was something coming off the ridge above us. 